Let's talk about the longevity piece. There's a lot of talk in the longevity world about minimizing protein to live a longer life. How do you feel about that? And for you, is there any truth or is it just about, because obviously there's the whole longevity versus quality of life. So is there any truth to it? And then is that just not what your goal is with your research and the way you live? So I totally agree with your second statement, longevity versus quality of life. We know that muscle health directly relates to quality of life. So, so being, you know, being 95 and healthy and mobile and, and metabolically healthy is far better than being 102 and frail and not getting around and being hospitalized. So, you know, I think muscle health there's a lot of data that that's a key to actual living. Um, I think the longevity thing is a lot of really bad science. It falls into two categories. Um, one is animal studies. Uh, they take mice and they put them in a sterile environment and they let them eat whatever they want, you know, whenever they want and see how long they live. Um, Rodents in that sort of environment overeat by a huge amount. They continuously get fatter and fatter. And we know that obesity shortens lifespan. So when you start restricting calories or restricting protein, now what you're doing is preventing obesity. And so it's not really a protein effect. It's an overeating effect. At the University of Illinois, uh, our animal group considers a 40% restriction to normalize animals. And the other thing that happens when you begin to restrict an animal, they now meal feed. If you look at an animal just allowed to be in a cage for longevity, they eat 24 hours a day. You can go in and look at the contents of their stomach and they're absorbing 24 hours a day. So they're triggering mTOR and they're triggering these processes in every tissue in the body, the liver, the heart, the kidney, wherever, 24 hours a day. And we've been talking about, we need meals, we need a stimulation of mTOR and we want it to shut off. So we want meal distribution. And if you then start restricting the animal, they shift to meal distribution now, and all of a sudden they're healthier. So that's exactly what we'd expect. So I think the longevity is an artifact of how they're feeding it. And they're feeding it in a lazy way. They're just saying, oh, here, go eat, and we'll look in three years and see how it goes. Uh, that's, not, that's not good science. The other part of it is epidemiology. And so they look and say, well, people who eat a more animal-based diet or have more protein don't live as long because they get X diseases. Well, that's really pretty bad science, too, because basically... They take one food frequency. They ask a person, well, what did you eat yesterday? And then 20 years later, they look at what diseases they got. I don't know anybody in my circle of friends who eats the same thing for 20 years. So I think it's just bad science. What we did, when I worked for the egg board for a while, and what we did was if you look at eggs in a healthy diet, and do epidemiology, you conclude that eggs are related, egg consumption is related to obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. But if you look a little closer and you look at first quartile versus fourth quartile, the people with the least amount of eggs are eating three eggs a week, and the people with the most are eating three and a half. So that means a half of egg per week is the cause of obesity, diabetes, heart disease. That makes no sense at all. So then if you start subdividing it more and you take out all the people who eat eggs at fast food restaurants versus the people who eat eggs at home, now what you find is eggs are a totally healthy part. They reduce the risk of obesity. They reduce risk of diabetes. They reduce risk of heart. So what we found now was that basically it's a lifestyle issue. If you have an unhealthy lifestyle and you're eating all of your food at fast foods or you're eating french fries and and sodas and sugary foods and and greasy hamburgers, there's a good chance you're not going to live as well. But if you're eating good food at home, uh, protein actually is totally a positive effect. So again, bad epidemiology, garbage in, garbage out. Bad epidemiology can tell you whatever you want 
uh, if you're willing to, you know, misuse it. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. It's all about balance and ratios. And so again, you can do it. And there's vegetarians and vegans out there who are very skilled at it. But the average consumer has no